Hi, we are Jacob, Charlie, and Sammy. The material we're going to be presenting on is spider silk as a high performance fiber. In particular, we will look at its potential use in research and its future role in the commercial market. During the duration of this video, we will delve into the properties, production, and structure of this material and how it can be used for the mentioned reasons. We're mainly going to be focusing on going into detail on what makes spider silk a viable option for companies today. Spider silk, also known as fibroin, is a naturally occurring fiber that has excellent mechanical properties. The production of spider silk is environmentally clean and its mechanical properties could make it a lucrative material for the production of sutures, ballistics, or clothing. However, further breakthroughs need to be made in order to cost effectively produce fibroin on a large scale. Global sustainability and the preservation of the environment are becoming increasingly relevant topics in the world today. The manufacturing of Kevlar has a negative effect on the environment. One of the main substances used in the production of Kevlar is sulfuric acid, which is used to keep the Kevlar in solution during the spinning process. Sulfuric acid is very toxic to animals and plants, and if disposed of or used incorrectly, can do great harm. Essentially, the manufacturing of Kevlar can be harmful to the environment and it can be unsustainable. Spider silk, on the other hand, is a naturally occurring substance. That means that it can be produced with relatively no negative consequences to the environment, making it a very interesting alternative to Kevlar in the future. Fibroin also has an extremely high strength to weight ratio, making its use very efficient for soldiers in bulletproof vests. If vests can be produced with equivalent strength but weigh less, the mobility of troops on the battlefield will be greater, saving lives. If realistic means for the production of fibroin are made available in the future, Fibroin can replace Kevlar and other fibers for its high strength to density ratio and small carbon footprint. Plastics can be soft, transparent, and flexible, and many different types of plastics function as innovative materials for use in absorbable sutures in the medical field. Currently, medical sutures are made of recyclable plastics. However, today, this method is not fully utilized due to difficulties with the collection and sorting of plastic waste. Therefore, most of these medical sutures are either disposed of in landfills, which require space and are bad for the environment, or are incinerated, which studies have shown produces very negative effects on the environment as well as human health. Finding a biodegradable alternative such as fibroin would cut out these negative effects. Additionally, the idea that spider silk may be able to replace nylon and polyester in the production of clothing could prove to pay great dividends in protecting the environment of the earth. Made from petrochemicals, nylon and polyester are non-biodegradable as well, so they are unsustainable on two accounts. Nylon manufacture creates nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas 310 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Making polyester uses large amounts of water for cooling, along with lubricants which can become a source of contamination. Both processes are also very energy hungry. Therefore, finding a substitute material that could be produced with exponentially less negative effects on the environment is of the utmost importance. The structure of spider silk consists of proteins which contain elastic regions and regions of high strength. One region of the protein is amorphous and thus allows for the elasticity of the silk. Another region of the pro protein consists of a crystalline structure of beta pleated sheets. These sheets form a tight crystal structure which allows for the high ultimate tensile strength of spider silk. Finally, a weaker crystal structure of beta sheets connects the amorphous and crystalline regions. These alternate regions allow spider silk to have high elasticity while maintaining a high tensile strength. This combination results in an extremely high toughness, which validates spider silk's use in ballistics. Biomimicry always poses the challenge of finding ways to effectively synthesize naturally occurring materials. It is unrealistic to farm spider silk since spiders are cannibalistic and therefore cannot form successful colonies. One area of research in the synthesis of fibroin is the use of silkworms. However, silkworms are unable to produce silk with the same tensile strength as spider silk. Others have attempted to implant the gene into goats since the glands that goats use to produce milk are similar to the glands that spiders use to produce fibroin. Most processing pathways rely on implanting spider DNA into other organisms. Craig Biocraft Laboratory is currently working on using genetically modified silkworms to produce spider silk. 
They estimate that by using silkworms, they will be able to produce spider silk at a cost of roughly $70 per pound. Others are attempting to use genetically modified bacteria to produce spider silk, but estimates for those costs come around nearly $70,000 per pound. This leaves silkworms as the most viable option for the processing of spider silk. Spider silk's ultimate tensile strength, ductility, and elasticity are what set it apart from other materials. For comparison, the tensile strength of spider silk is around 1200 megapascals, while that of weaker forms of steel is around 500 megapascals. Obviously, spider silk is no replacement for steel in any structural way, but this speaks to the properties of fibroin. Spider silk also has a remarkable elasticity of around 25%, which far surpasses any metal with a comparable tensile strength. This kind of strength is even more impressive when taking into account the weight of fibroin. Fibroin is able to achieve the tensile strengths of many metals with only a fraction of the weight. While the tensile strength of spider silk is extremely high, its most useful property is its superior toughness. Kevlar has a higher yield strength than fibroin, but fibroin's toughness exceeds that of Kevlar. This means that spider silk is capable of absorbing more energy without fracturing than Kevlar, potentially making it a better option for ballistics. The elasticity of spider silk also makes it an interesting choice for clothing, which, re which would be highly resistant to tearing and weathering. Spider silk is an extremely strong material with high yield strength and low density. Because of this, it's an ideal material for aiding in the production of materials for performance clothing, military wear, and sutures. Because of spider silk's incredibly high tensile strength, it would be much more resistant to tearing. In reality, this would take away the need to go out and buy new clothes as often as with normal clothing. Second would be military wear. The problem with the nylon material used now for some protective gear is that it melts rather than burns at high temperatures, which is not good for soldiers in battle. Spider silk is made of protein-based fibers, which allows it to burn over melting while exposed to high temperatures. Its high toughness over other materials also provides a quality that is needed for protective wear. Third is surgical techniques, and in particular, sutures. Currently, sutures' mechanical properties decrease over time and allow for an amount of infections to occur. Sutures made with the braided strands of spider silk exhibit the, strength, the same amount of tensile strength as previous sutures, but have a high fatigue behavior, meaning it does not lose strength after having force applied on it multiple times over time. Spider silk uses all of its proper, properties expertly as webbing. One of its great properties is that it's made of protein, allowing for spiders to eat and recycle it within their bodies to transfer that protein towards a new web. This does not make them reliant on catching food every day. Yet, there is no such process yet to mimic this recyclability when used in the processing of clothing, military wear, or sutures. This would have to be researched in the future and as of now is a limitation. Another limitation as of the current day is the processing of spider silk. There is yet a way to perfectly mimic the creation while producing identical results as spiders' natural production without the use of spiders. As of now, this is being worked on but can be considered a limitation of the present day. The production of fibroin holds many possibilities for the future. Researchers are talking about utilizing this material for medical and military purposes. Without further research, it's hard to know exactly what spider silk is capable of achieving. However, if pop culture has taught us anything, fibroin could very well hold the keys to suppressing crime and preserving the peace of entire cities. Thank you guys for watching.